I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. These are the three doors of a very nice uh, uh, display cabinet that was damaged when it was being shipped here from Scotland. I don't have the case here, but the customer provided a good photo. As you can see, a lot of glass was broken, and that's what the job is, replace that glass. I think this cabinet, the design of the doors, of the design of these mullions goes back to federal period or George III. I think this is more likely a uh, early 20th century reproduction type piece. It's very well made, solid oak. So, uh, all right, let's get started. So I'm going to use a uh, heat gun to soften up this putty and uh, work at it with a putty knife. I kept the heat gun on that putty for about two minutes. Uh, I have it set at medium, which is about 450 degrees centigrade. And I was careful to keep it about 15 centimeters away from the object. I don't want to harm the wood in any way. And it took two minutes to get started, but then once you go along, you can, you can kind of move right along pretty quickly. I use the putty knife as a gauge to keep my distance. Otherwise, I have a tendency to keep drifting closer and closer. I'm still using the heat gun to loosen up these bits of putty. It's really important to get every bit of that old putty. It's going to be difficult enough to fit glass in here without uh, the old putty getting in the way. Well, okay, that's uh, that's one down. I have three more to go on this door, and uh, for the purposes of, of this video, I'm probably just going to show this one door. It's the worst one with four panels. It's funny, this one section of putty seems much harder than the other putties, but just needs a little extra heat and a little more prodding.
like a piece of fabric. This is another section of putty that's really hard. It doesn't want to soften up like the others. But I'll just keep applying more heat to it. Okay, that's, uh, that's the first door. I took out four panes of glass and all the putty. It took about four hours to do that and I'm taking into account the time it takes me to make a video. So it's about an hour a piece um, and I'll do the next two off camera. I'll tell you it's, uh, it's slow going. This is the second door. I'm on the third piece. These pieces were big. This putty is really hard. It, you, got to put a lot of heat on it to make it soften up. Plus the mullions are very delicate. Yeah, the mullions are just uh, 1.7 millimeters. And it's interesting, in, in a lot of corners, not all, but all the corners of this octagonal piece, as I scraped the putty, I could see these rectangular dark places. And I quickly saw But what they are, are pieces of fabric. They put pieces of fabric across these joints. I'm imagining it's to strengthen them. And I may do the same thing. But I'm removing the old fabric. I don't want anything in the way of my glass being cut. That is a very, very tight fit. There's not a lot of room for variance. Okay, this is the uh, eighth and final broken piece to be removed. Uh, I'm going to clean up the bench and set it up for cutting glass. Okay, I've got everything I need. Uh, glass cutter. Nibbler scissors, marker, tape, measuring tape, old glass, square, and a sleeve of uh, restoration glass. And I almost forgot, a uh, cardboard and a utility knife. I'm going to make uh, templates of each piece out of cardboard. Okay, I'm ready to start cutting some glass. Uh, some of those more odd shaped pieces uh, I may make templates for out of cardboard. I think I'm going to start with these two small, small rectangular pieces and I think I can measure those uh, directly from these. And I'm going to use, this is a piece of glass I took out of the door and uh, I'm going to use that, try using that first. That's convenient.
Hey. First one looks good. That's a that's a good omen. Two for two, but those were the easy ones. Okay, sticking to the rectangle theme, I'll do this long rectangle. I found a piece of uh, restoration glass that will work. Well, I'm completely frustrated trying to cut this big piece of glass to make the long pieces in the doors. It's about, it's about 41 inches long and I cannot get a clean cut. This keeps happening and I feel like I'm just not getting a good even score on this length of glass by hand. So I'm checking out YouTube videos. I called my daughter Emily and she suggested that I take this piece of glass to like the hardware store where they have the jig for scoring glass. And, uh, and I remember to have a friend right here in town who has a frame shop. So I'm going to take all this over, see if we can get these cuts done. Hi, Leah. How you doing? Good. Thank you so much oh, you're for welcome. taking on this glass job for yeah. me. Yeah. It's one of those things that can be really hard if you don't have the right tools. And here's your glass cutting My glass tip. cutter, yeah. This is Leah Scotton of the Little Falls Custom Frame Shop in Gorm, Maine. cut this a little bit too big and then I can go back and fix it. fell off all by itself. It's amazing the difference a clean piece of glass makes. Yeah, that was interesting. Leah saved my butt on this job. But I still have to cut the angles on some of these pieces. Interestingly, when I was asking my daughter about using this glass cutter, she said she didn't have a lot of experience with these. She uses her glass cutting machine for everything. And with Leah here, it's the same way. They can cut all their rectangles on the machine she didn't even have any good tools like this. So I'm on my own.
All right. Thank goodness. I've been forgetting about this little break in the mullion here. I gotta get it glued up. And it's okay to use uh, uh, conventional TVA glue for a repair like this. These particular uh, spring clamps are great because uh, they have adjustable tension and uh, you can adjust it with a screw in here and uh, so they can do a delicate clamp like this. The conventional spring clamp was way too strong. It would destroy that mullion. Nice. Okay, it's time to do the putty. I've got uh, this window glazing putty. I've got oil colors, Van Dyke Brown. I kind of just took one look at this old putty and I thought, it's got to be Van Dyke Brown. Uh, Dixie cup, plastic cup, paint thinner, Putty knives, razor blade, plenty of racks. I'm dampening this putty knife a bit with paint thinner. And a nice thing about this putty is that uh, it takes a long time to dry. It doesn't even completely dry for ages, but tomorrow after it sets up a bit, I can go around and clean it up a little bit better too. A little bit easier to work with then.
All right, I let this dry overnight. Oh, it's firmed up quite a bit. Yesterday, the putty was so soupy and, uh, and wet, I, I was worried about the fact that I had added oil color, but let's see what happens. I'll wet the putty knife with uh, paint thinner. I want to do this big octagonal piece next. I remembered that they had little pieces of fabric across these joints. You can see the remnants of one of the pieces. So I've got some cambric which is a type of uh, material you'll see on the bottom of upholstered pieces. But it's nice and thin. It's got some strength to it. I'll cut some strips that are 3 8 wide or 9.5 millimeters. I'll cut them 2 inches. Or that's 50.8 millimeters. A little bit of hide glue. Okay, I've let that glue dry. All the corners are reinforced. I hope the glass still fits in there. It does. You can see I've got the door elevated a bit to help me get my uh, putty knife in there to put down that first layer of putty. Okay, and I'll let this uh, set up overnight, firm up a little bit before I go around and really clean up the edges and everything. So, now I can get started on the next one. I'm about halfway done. Okay, the store's got all the glass in place. Uh, I'll clean the putty up starting tomorrow when it's firmed up a bit. This door had four broken pieces. That's, that's the door at the most. Um, I'll get on with the next door. Okay, these have had a chance to set up overnight, so now I can start cleaning. First thing I want to do is, is flip it over and clean the other side. I got to clean up everywhere it squished out.
Actually, this cleanup uh, isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be starting off. Once I figured out the procedures, uh, I'm moving right along here. And I discovered uh, I was having such a hard time getting the, the, the putty smooth. And I discovered that uh, once I've got it completely clean, I can use my finger. Well, there you go. Three doors to an antique display case or china cabinet. Uh, in, in a move from Scotland, eight pieces of glass were broken. Thank goodness for the Benheim restoration glass because their glass is indistinguishable from the old glass. I can't point to these and say which ones were broken. I can, I can actually tell from my putty in the back. But uh, I think they look pretty good. I've got 20 hours in this job and I use these tools and materials. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. Today we're taking a look at some cabinet doors I restored. These are glass pane doors from a very handsome federal period secretary bookcase. The doors were damaged when the unsecured bookcase fell forward to the floor. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, share. Feel free to repost on other platforms like Facebook or Reddit. I'd appreciate it. Okay, I finished doing all the touch-up work on the mullions. Now I can turn this over and uh, install the existing glass that I have, the glass that didn't break. I've got to scrape any glue on the inside here from when I re-glued all these mullions. And I still have to clean uh, the old putty uh, off the old glass. Before I repaired these, I put all the glass in where I thought it would go and uh, numbered it all. Uh, but it could be different now. Uh, we'll find out. I'm going to start refitting them where I think they belong. Now I've got them all fitted, I can start installing them with the glazing putty. So you just keep kneading the putty until it's a consistent color. It takes a while. I'm just about there. feels a little dry to me. I'm just going to add uh, literally just drops of paint thinner. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of this putty. I'm not going to use gloves for this because uh, I won't be able to get it into the back of the mullion there with gloves on. I need to roll out the thinnest possible little snake. Okay, so I got the Thin little pieces down. Now I'll take the piece of glass and squish it down as much as I dare. I just realized I can pick this up and take a look and see if I've got the right amount out. Yeah, it looks like there's just a very, very thin layer between the glass and the mullions. It looks good. I can't really sell for sure until I scrape the excess away, but it looks good. Now I put down the larger amount of putty on the out this side. 
Okay, that's good. I'll uh, let this dry for a couple of days before I take a razor blade and clean it up a little bit, but it's not bad. Anyway, I just got about, uh, I think, 13 or 14 to go. On the second door, I've already uh, installed the existing glass, but on this door now we have uh, three pieces that I have to cut new glass for. All right, I've got uh, three pieces of antique glass here. This is glass salvaged out of uh, other furniture that's come in with broken glass.
Now I'm uh, cleaning up and then French polishing the door frames. First I'm sanding with uh, lightly with just some 500 paper and then French polishing it with my uh, uh, French lac. So only one hinge uh, broke. I have the original hinge that goes here. And uh, in my collection of old hinges, I have a, an older hinge that is exactly the same size. So that was lucky. There we go, the bookcase section of a secretary bookcase. It fell face forward. The doors were all smashed. I think it looks pretty good. So now let's deliver it and get it back together with the base unit where it belongs. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration, in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice cabinet. It's a pine cupboard. It's the upper section of a cupboard. It's, uh, I don't really know how old it is, but it, the case is dovetailed together. It has this very interesting uh, gothic arch thing going on here. Uh, but all that's really wrong with it is that the glass is broken here. And what this video is about It's about just replacing this piece of glass. Of course, the first step is to take the door. Off. All right, I've got a, uh, a thin, flexible blade putty knife. Uh, stiff putty knife, an old chisel. Uh, I really like this heat gun. It's a great heat gun. Number one, it can it stands up easily to keep this hot surface away from combustibles. It has three speeds. I'm going to start with the lowest speed here, which is really, it's 50 degrees centigrade. It, uh, it's kind of like a, a hair dryer level of heat. I'm going to start with as low as possible. I don't want to scorch the wood or anything. I'm going to just put a piece of plywood here to protect it. Uh, I think the heat, uh, at least the heat I'm going to start with is too low to scorch the wood. Hopefully it will soften the putty. Well, the low heat doesn't seem to be doing anything, but you know, that's where you start. See if it'll work. 
I'll go to the next, uh, next setting, which is uh, 450 degrees centigrade. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm going to try it. All right, it didn't take long at all for the, uh, the second setting to start to soften this up. So as it gets warmed up, it actually gets easier and easier, and I'm able to start the putty knife right at the top edge, and then kind of use using the putty knife as a heat shield, I just do that area and it peels away. I'm glad that's done. That took about uh, an hour, but it pays off to be uh, careful. My goal is to save this piece of glass, although it did crack while I was working on it, and uh, then it cracked again. But I'll try to save these pieces as best I can. I mean, obviously, this is antique glass, and uh, if I have a job that needs a smaller piece, I can use it. And now I'll go <clears throat> find some glass to put in here. Uh, I have a collection of antique glass. I don't think any of the pieces are going to be this big. But I have uh, restoration glass uh, from Benheim's in New Jersey that is, uh, looks just like this. Okay, uh, up in the barn I, I do have some restoration glass that I mentioned. But I found a, a rather large piece of uh, antique glass. And so uh, I think will be the right size. So the next question is, you know, the, the, the old glass has a, it's real wavy and has a lot of defects. I need to see if this glass that I saved from another job uh, has the same level of defects. So here's a piece of the old glass and you can really see how wavy it is. good wave to it. I think that'll work. Yeah, I think that'll work fine. Okay, now, this is not a video about how to cut glass. This is a video about me trying to cut glass. Okay, so I failed with the antique glass, but now I'll use a piece of the restoration glass, which is really nice and, and actually uh, just as wavy as the old glass, so it's fine. I think I wasn't uh, scoring the glass evenly enough. And I'm also uh, kind of learning how to use these special pliers, which breaks it. Got it. Okay, so the glass fit in pretty well, thank goodness. Now I've got some uh, 
window glazing compound. I have some uh, dry colors so I can mix it to this color. Uh, some paint thinner and a putty knife. I think for this. So uh, let's do it. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm going to let this dry overnight, although it doesn't ever uh, really dry, but it'll, it'll dry some and then allow me to uh, go around and clean the glass and, and scrape these edges, uh, and get it all nice and clean. Okay, it's dried overnight. You know, it's still soft, but it's firmed up quite a bit. And I think enough for me to clean this glass as long as I'm careful. Well, I got to tell you that uh, the restoration glass matches the old glass so fine. I, I, I forget which paint it was I uh, replaced, but it was this one. And uh, boy, it looks pretty good.